So I don't think I've ever really known how to study the guitar. And I guess you could say music in a much larger sense. It's like the appreciation has always come easy to me, but the act of really diving into that world as a player has actually been quite the struggle. Even so, there have always been a few abnormal exceptions. So I'm a Coldplay fan. Don't know what to tell you. To be more specific, I'm a very big Coldplay fan, and they actually happen to be my second favorite band of all time. And even though I've never gotten the unique honor of seeing them play Yellow Live, I can confidently say that their guitar player, Johnny Buckland, has inspired some of my playing as much as just about any other guitar player on the planet. I mean, if you really think about it, this guy is responsible for some of the most iconic and memorable pop melodies of the past 25 years. But even with that, I've always wanted to go deeper with this band. I know that often the easiest music comparison that most people have for Coldplay is something like a U2. But the more I listen to a lot of their older albums, specifically A Rush of Blood to the Head and Parachutes, I tend to notice a certain group of people actually crediting some clear Radiohead influence. Only problem is I know almost nothing about Radiohead and I wouldn't even know where to start. But lucky for me, I knew one friend who might be able to help. So Radiohead was winning Band of the Year over and over and over again when I was in high school. Okay. Did not listen okay. to him. I'm a notorious hater. See, this is my friend Sean. We've been friends for a couple years now and he happens to be one of Radiohead's self-proclaimed biggest fans. So I decided to pick his brain for some advice on where to even start. I think a lot of, you probably heard this in the comments, like Radiohead is like a musician's band. As someone who doesn't know this band super well, my second question, Okay. where would you start? I would say, if I didn't know anything about your musical taste, I would probably start most people off with In Rainbows. Okay. I feel like it's the most accessible album uh, from a songwriting standpoint that still I feel is a great representation of their sound and kind of vibe as a whole. Listen, I fully trust Sean, but that doesn't mean I'm not at least curious as to how I'll react to even the most accessible Radiohead. I mean, I've only ever really vibed with High and Dry and I feel like this will be so different. I think I'm about as ready as I'll ever be, so. So I started my journey within rainbows, just trusting that my friend actually knew what he was talking about. I can definitely hear some early Coldplay in this. The arrangements alone are just so interesting. The guitar just in the left ear and the drum machine. Is that a flute? No, that's a synth. I'm listening to Body Snatchers now. It's literally just system overload. I wonder how many guitars they have going right now. I mean, once you get to Weird Fishes, you can hear so clearly where Coldplay got some of their stuff from. I'm really just trying to remember the little parts that stuck out. Yeah, all I, all I need might be the favorite. All I need might be the favorite right now. Do they have the full kit panned hard right? If it's an album a day, so far I really liked it. In Rainbows, not nearly as dissonant as I thought it would be going in, but again, that's the most accessible one. Today is the big day we're going for OK Computer, because apparently this is the best one. OK Computer just hit me from the first track, Airbag, and like my life was never the same. Just starting off. Okay. I feel like it's already much more electric guitar driven than in Rainbows. It's like more overdrive. Am I hearing some U2 influence or maybe the other way around? Subterranean is definitely the favorite so far. Let down, I've definitely heard this before. Oh, this was in the bear. Oh, yes, that's where. This is Karma Police and I feel like I've definitely heard it before. Fitter Happier is weird. Why is there just a robot talking? No surprise, I've definitely heard this riff before. I feel like I've unintentionally listened to a lot of this before. Today is the bends, so let's see what we're up against. It's late, I'm tired, but I am excited because I know this is the one that has high and dry. I don't even want to know how hard dialing in the delay for this will be. This album feels so much more guitar heavy. The thing about this band that I'm starting to realize is that you genuinely never know where a song is going. And that's kind of exciting. The thing that I'm noticing as I start to listen to more of Johnny's guitar playing is like, he's not a guitar player who's just trying to endlessly impress other guitar players. He's genuinely not afraid to get weird. <laughs> High and Dry is legitimately one of the best songs I've ever heard. If I ever scored a movie, this would be this would be in the title sequence. How do you even follow that up? How do you even follow that up with Fake Plastic Trees? I feel like I've heard of that one before though. I'm gonna be honest, Bones is not my favorite. I knew I had heard this one before and I knew it was a How I Met Your Mother song. I promise you, I guess it was How I Met Your Mother. I know that show way too well. Essentially just from pop culture, I feel like I've heard 
more than half of this album before, even if I've never formally listened to it. I just started just, and I'm like, oh yeah, everyone knows that riff. My iron lung wasn't expecting that. Bulletproof is nice. Bulletproof is real nice. That chorus guitar hook, that just made it one of the best on the album, probably the best other than the high and dry. Fantastic. Tonight we're listening to Kid A, and apparently this one's pretty good. Just reading through the titles, I know little to nothing about this one. Not three seconds in, and I'm like, wait, I've heard this song in a movie. Apparently it was in The Accountant, but I don't remember that movie at all. I'm listening to the actual track Kid A, and legitimately wondering, like, what am I listening to? I'm so confused. Wait, wait, what is that synth? What is that synth? So this is National Anthem. Listen, I'm sure this is one of their more critically acclaimed albums and it's very artsy. Now at this point, I hadn't listened to it all yet, but I knew I wanted to start taking a more practical stab at it on the actual guitar with the songs that really stood out to me. I guess it's time. So there are a lot of knobs and I know it'll definitively take a lot of time, but I'm sure it'll be worth it. I think selfishly on the front end, I'm thinking just about getting the right pedals, but it's so much more than that. It's asking like, how does he use the pedals? What order, how should they sound individually? So the board is pretty simple and fairly straightforward. And I did happen to spend most of my time on a quip board, looking at pictures, trying to figure this part out. Now, outside of just having a tuner on the board, I started with a pitch shifter, which I knew was the thing I was gonna be the most uncomfortable with, but I also knew just how important it was to certain parts of certain songs, especially Especially like Just, which happens to be one of the five favorite radio songs I've listened to thus far. Now it is a little bit different than the whammy pitch shifting pedal that Johnny specifically uses, but for the tones that I needed and for the songs that I was using it for, I felt like this was a good place to start. Now up next I headed to the drive section, which I knew would be super important, and through my research I found that he's used a couple different drives over the years, but one of the ones that I kept seeing over and over again that I felt like I could have a good grasp on because of my past history with similar pedals is the SD-1. For the time-based effects, I ended up going with the space echo and the weird thing is about a year ago when I was building a very specific board I ended up getting my hands on the re2 which is like a mini version of this space echo and although I really really love the tomes I felt a bit overwhelmed by all of the different modes on there and so I thought to myself why not go all in on the big guns to really understand this thing but what I ended up noticing was even though it's primarily a delay pedal and that's the first thing that comes to mind when you think of it I actually ended up using it a lot for the reverb and I think they sounded really good and they weren't necessarily super over the top for some of the Johnny clean tones that I was finding. But it wasn't all about the pedals. Then I had to start looking into the amp. This is my first time pulling out the Vox in quite a minute. I'm trying not to just twist knobs, but to have like a purpose. I'm just really trying to put in the work right now and ask the more detailed questions. You know, find the amp settings, find the SD-1 setting, find how they work well together. But once I had began my research on the pedals and the tones, the only thing left to do was to find a guitar and learn some of the riffs that had really stuck out. Real talk, I haven't taken out this telly in almost a year, but I know this is what I have to do if I'm gonna get Johnny Greenwood right. Like for the first time in a while, I actually wanna study somebody. Like it has to be the same guitar same string gauge. I heard they use as 10, so I had to get on that. New strings, I'm gonna take it easy. I'm not gonna go like straight to the tremolo picking. This pick is gonna be worn down real quick. Johnny's guitar playing is like, he's not a guitar player who's just trying to endlessly impress other guitar players. He's genuinely not afraid to get weird. influence that came from OK Computer is something that really, I don't know, I, I, I would be hard pressed to think of another example in rock history that has done that.
As I sat there learning and playing these riffs, for the first time, I felt like I could feel it. And it wasn't what I thought. I originally imagined it was going to be learning the reasons behind Radiohead's genius, but all I could think was, even though this band clearly thinks on a completely different level musically, as a guitar player, I keep coming back to Johnny. And they've even said this themselves, that like Johnny is the only one that's actually like a, like a great musician. Which, you know, I, I'll push back on some. I think a lot of that is just kind of like some humble humble talk. But uh, yeah, so Johnny is a little bit younger than the other ones. But they're like, this this guy, this bro is, is ridiculous. So in terms of my introduction to Radiohead, I think that's really it. To say I learned a lot would be probably the understatement of the millennium. And I think I realized more and more just how great Johnny is as a guitar player. Like I learned a lot about the band as a whole, but just seeing what Johnny Greenwood could do in his sense of arrangement, like Sean told me in the beginning, it's on a completely different level. And real talk, I don't even know if I've really scratched the surface yet, having only listened to a select few albums once and one or two of those albums a couple times to get more of the singles down. But once I start really getting into the acoustic stuff and listening to the rest of the albums, I feel like it's an actual goal of mine to find out just how special this band is. Because I've really only scratched the surface. But anyway, thank you again for watching. This was one of the longer projects that I've done in a while, and it was one of the most fun. If you want to know anything more about this board or any of the gear that I used in this video, I got them from the homies at Sweetwater. The links are in the description. Make sure to check it out. It's one of the best ways to support the channel if that's something you want to do, or if you're just curious about any of the other gear that I use in this video, make sure to check out those links. Also, thank you so much to all my patrons. The full interview with Sean is on there if you want to check it out. Like and subscribe if you had a good time, and most importantly, like most important of all, have a fantastic day.